Hey everybody, it's Mike from Here the Watchman. I am so blessed today to have an amazing guest for you to listen to. It is Dr. Good Vibes. His name is Mike. I'm not going to give you his last name. He is a doctor who is helping Field McConnell. He is standing up with Christ to fight the oppression that has happened and the kidnapping of Field McConnell. Uh, Doctor, thank you so much for joining us. My, My pleasure, pleasure, sir. So, uh, uh, you know, tell me, Doctor, I mean, what has this done to you, and, and what does it mean to you with Christ in fighting the fight that you're fighting for Field McConnell? Well, I did not know Field McConnell as of... Uh, December of 2018, and it was January 2019, one of the uh, people, I just have people in about the last three and a half years, they just show up at my clinic, and they say, I heard about you, and I'd, I'd like to meet you, and blah, 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 and the next thing you know, they join the team, and they don't stay here and, and practice or do anything, but they we learn, and we share knowledge, and we share fellowship. Uh, we're all Christians. Um, so that was that was good. And this one uh, group, we were having a group session tomorrow uh, where we just get together and we talk about what's going on. We're going to obviously the topic will be the kidnapping of Phil McConnell and what's going on. But like I said, I never I hadn't heard of him. And one of the ladies said, uh, you know, did you listen to uh, Abel Danger last night? And I go, no. And I listen to a lot of shows, you know, but, and there's a lot out there. And uh, my poor wife says I'm plugged, constantly plugged in because once I woke up in about 2014, I can't get enough data into me. I have to keep learning because I realize the more I learn, the more I don't know. Um, and it has to do with health and it has to do with what's going on in the world. Um, so anyway, I... I, I she said, I'm going to send you a link. So I started listening to Field. And it was about the time that he was he was visiting with a guy by the name of Gobsmack. And I I listened to some shows, and yeah, that was okay, okay here and there. And then every once in a while there'd be uh, uh, Mad Dog Maddox would call in or Juan O'Savin would call in. And the knowledge that they were giving me was, uh, or giving the audience, was amazing. And... Um, so I just I would listen to him when I when I had time. Well, one Saturday in late April it was the last Saturday in April of 2019. I was I was here at the clinic. It was a cold day here in Wisconsin, and I uh, left the house, came to the office, and I was rearranging furniture and doing doing some cleaning, and and I was listening to Operation Full uh, Operation Pink Moon. And both Juan O'Savin and Mad Dog were on, and there was a lot of effing going on. And um, that was one of the things that, you know, just, you cringe a little bit. But uh, once you get to know Phil and understand who he's addressing that um, military talk to, I shouldn't even say that. Um, I was in the military six years, and, uh, yeah, there's we all have our, our languages. But uh, anyway... I, the show was almost over, and I was thinking to myself, I'm in the, my son's, uh, my son is a chiropractor, and uh, I was in his office doing some cleaning, and I was thinking to myself, boy, I'd sure like to share this with a bunch of the group that, that I belong to, but I was a little concerned about the, uh, the F word, and as I was thinking that, Field goes, okay, show's over, we're going to play one song, and we'll be out of here. And he said, this song was, um, everybody thinks Elvis Presley wrote it, but he didn't. It was, uh, I don't know, Baptist or uh, Methodist minister by the name of Carol Roberson, and it's called One Pair of Hands. Now, I've been singing in front of the congregation in our church for 58 years, and I never heard that song. And so, as soon as he started to play it, I knew it was going to crush my heart. And it did. And... Um, about a third of the way through the song, I'm on my knees, and I'm laying across this uh, chiropractic adjusting table, and I'm sobbing. And the tears are coming down, and they're, um, 
I just lost control. And it's a song um, that really touched me. And I'm on my knees. The song's over. There's total quiet now. Field's gone. Everything's gone. And in my head, I was looking. I was looking across the adjusting table, and I could see a, a box of Kleenex from my vantage point on the floor. And I'm always. I'm short enough anyway. But now on my knees, I was really short. And I could see this box of Kleenex, and I thought, I'm going to get up and go blow my nose and get myself straightened up here, squared away. And uh, before I could get off my knees, I heard this very clear voice in my head says, go offer your services to Phil McConnell. And in my head, I said, what? And in my head, it said, you heard what I said. So I'm still on my knees and I'm thinking, well, how will I ever get to see him? Because he's taking on the Clintons and the Pope and the Queen of England, and he's got to have a Marine Guard around him. And I'll never get to see him. So I'm trying to make excuses not to go. Well, God doesn't work that way. And so the next thing I know, myself and three other of my group uh, packed in a car on that Tuesday, which happened to be May Day, May 1st. And we drove on down to Plum City. And uh, Field wasn't at his 401 Main Street. I mean, he announces where he's at, so these people that say... You know, we, we got him before he, he ran and hid. He doesn't run and hide. He stands right there. And he tells you, I'm at 401 Main Street, Plum City. If you can't find that, you've got a problem because 599 is the population there. So anyway, we drove down, long story short, went into the hardware store next to, next to his building, which is an old bank building. And uh, one of the guys that was in the group walked up to the lady at the counter and said, do you, any of you guys know Field McConnell? They all laugh. They all know Field. And, he, and the guy says, well, do you know how to get a hold of him? She says, yeah, I, I know his phone, by, phone number by heart, so I give it to you. You can call him. So I got the phone number and I gave him a call. And all I said, uh, and of course it went to voicemail, and it was, uh, the message was something like this. I'm going 127 miles an hour. I can't go any more than that. And I just can't take any more volunteers. But if you want to, leave a message anyway. And I thought, well, I'm here. I'm going to leave a message. So I, all I said was, uh, <clears throat> hello, I'm, uh, I've been sent by God to offer my services to you. And I'm in Plum City today. So if you get a chance, can you give me a call? That's all I said. And then... Uh, but 30 seconds later, I get the, um, I get a ring on my phone and it's on a text and it's his, it's his phone number in the text. So he wanted me to text him. So I texted the same message <clears throat> and about 10 seconds later, my phone rings and it's Phil McConnell. And he said, you don't even have to tell me why you're here. They just told me. And when he's point, you know, he, I didn't see him point, but I knew what he was saying because that's where I get my messages from. And so I thought, wow, that's cool. And, uh, and he said, so where are you at? And I said, I'm, I'm in a hardware store. And he says, oh, take the phone to, uh, I won't say her name, to the lady and uh, ask, ask, uh, ask her to talk to me. So I brought the phone to her, and I had it on speaker, and I set it on the counter, and I said, uh, Field wants to talk to you. She goes, what do you need, Field? And Field goes, give the key to Mike, and then give him back his phone. Now, I haven't seen the man. He doesn't know me. Um, and now, all of a sudden, I got a key to this building where I've been watching for five months, watching him on his little studio thing. And I thought, wow, that's, that's, that's pretty, pretty amazing. Well, we went into uh, the studio, and, I and he said, um, he said, you know, I've had this Aussie here for about 17 days, and I was wondering why he was here, and now I know why he's here to meet you. And, and we did, uh, we have something in common, and I won't get into that story right now, but anyway, the two of them came down uh, into town, and uh, we met, all four of us met the two of them, and... Um, we just sat around and, and talked for a while, went into his little studio there, and, and we were just amazed to meet him. I find him to be, he's not a, an American hero, he's a global hero. Um, he's taking on 
those that uh, are doing unspeakable things to our children. And there's some children that are being bred underground and they never see the light of day. They're harvesting them, they're eating them, they're abusing them. Um, and I didn't know much of that when I answered that call to offer my services, but I know it now. And um, anyway, we met, we were having a good time. He was the friendliest guy. There were no guards around. It was him, and he says, my guard is God. I figure it's good enough for me. It's good enough for him, and uh, that's, you know, that's how we go. And uh, he said, so how did, how did you get down here? And I said, well, somebody told me about your show. I said, I didn't know you. And uh, somebody told me, and I've been listening for five, about five months now, and um, I was listening to your Operation Pink Moon, and I said, I really like the messages and the knowledge that I got, but I was, towards the end, I was leery about sharing that um, program with a bunch of my friends, including uh, family members, and uh, because of the F word, sir, and it, you know, I understand what you're doing, but I, I was reluctant, and about the time I thought that thought in my head, you ended the show with a song, and that song crushed my heart and uh, brought me to my knees. And I said when I was on my knees and the song got over, I got a message as clear as a bell, offer your services to Phil McConnell. I said, what? And it said, you heard what I said. And I said, so, you know, I'm here. So then Phil goes, well, what was the song? And I said it was called One Pair of Hands. And... Um, he said, oh, I love that song. He said, I just wish I could sing better than I do. And one of the groups said, this guy can sing. And the other three said, yep, he can really sing. And I'm not, I, I like to sing. There's a reason why I'm not on the Grand Ole Opry stage, because I'm not that good. I just, I enjoy singing, and uh, a lot of people like how I sound. So anyway, he says, well, let's, let's, let's play that song right now. And he turns around and he goes on his keyboard and he types in one pair of hands and up it comes and it starts off. And I start singing with him. And we're singing along with Carol Roberson. And we got a few lines into it. And then the song was still playing and he turned to the, the people that came with me and looked at them and then he turned around and he looked at me and he goes, he stopped the song, he says, we're going up to my office, we're going to record that. And so not only did we get to meet him in his studio, but we got to go to his home, got a tour of all his hot rods and fancy cars and, and the, the license plates that uh, have certain things on them. Here's something that's not a coincidence, Mike, this... Uh, he has a, has a license plate on one of his cars, and it says Q minus. Okay? So now he gets kidnapped, taken to jail in Ellsworth, Wisconsin, Pierce County, and his number that's assigned him is 2095. And if you do the numbers, that's 16. That's Q minus. Not a coincidence, is it? No, no. It's just, it is absolutely amazing. I just told that to Field here about an hour ago. I was on the phone with him, and uh, he said, really? And I go, he said, how does that work? And I said, well, just add the 2 and the 9 and the 5, and you get 16. And uh, so that's and that was brought up by one of his uh, fans. Uh, uh, he likes saying her, her code name is, uh, uh, let's see, 44 Double D. And uh, it doesn't stand for what we guys think of. <laughs> it, it's something else. It's her name. But, and she's an absolute delight, her and her husband. But anyway, um, so that's how we met. And I felt like he said, well, I, do I get to see you guys again? And I said, yeah, we can, I can come down. He says, I do my shows on Monday and Thursday. And I was there on a Tuesday, right? Not knowing. It wasn't a coincidence. God had its go there and do that. So I started showing up, and we started, uh, reluctantly, I started sitting down in front on his chair and talking to uh, his audience. 
about health stuff. And my my license is uh, I've had for almost well 43 plus years now is a chiropractic license, but I wore myself out. Uh, by about 2007, my right shoulder gave out on me, and I limped it along for another year and a half. And then I, I couldn't, I couldn't even start my car with my right hand. I had to get in the passenger side and turn the key. So anyway, um, I had to, you know, I felt pretty bad, got depressed, got through the door in front of me. I opened it up, walked through, uh, and I learned, got certified in something. And then another door came, and I got certified in that. And so I have a bunch of certifications, and I have the ability to teach people how to live a cleaner, healthier life. Um, and it really works. There's miracles that occur uh, when you take away the sugar and the white flour and, and the white rice and the white potatoes and uh, teach them how to think right. Um, something happened after Fields, so I've been I've been with Field since May first, and usually once a week. And now that he's gone, I'm going to try to go down there on Mondays and Thursdays and help Kirk Pendergrass uh, with the show because Field worked 13 years to get to where he's at now, and we're not letting that go away. He's got an audience out there that loves him, and we love him, and <clears throat> the message has to continue to go out. And so I've been blessed to have uh, getting close to 100 people that have applied or have offered their services to come and help the McConnell Veterans Ranches and the, and the uh, Children's Crusade. Um, we have people that can help with uh, sexually abused people. And unfortunately, most of them, the majority of them are female, but it's getting more and more prevalent that, unfortunately, the boys are being um, mistreated as well. And to have someone that has developed a technique that will work, and it works very quickly and very effectively and permanently, and that's a big word out there, people, permanently, for sexually abused people. Her name is Dr. Uh, Green. And I did an interview with her on uh, October 31st. And Field was there, obviously, and uh, Lakita Green was there. And um, I had about a one-hour interview, and it went over really big. And so there's a whole lot of uh, women that have volunteered to learn this technique. And if you think about the thousands and tens of thousands of just children alone that are being abused every single day, uh, by these pedophiles, um, once they get freed and Christ has uh, taken victory, we have to roll up our sleeves and we really have to get to work at helping people. Well, you know, uh, Doctor, Doctor, I, I, I just want to say, God bless you for what you did. I mean, I met Field McConnell uh, like five years ago. And John B. Wells, who has a show called uh, Ark to Midnight, and yes. uh, he introduced Field and I, and I sat down and talked with Field, and I'll tell you folks, I, after that I thought, wow, this guy is a little nutty, but man, he's a good Christian, and he's out there in the forefront serving Jesus, and that's the thing that we don't realize, and, and that people don't understand. His incarceration is... Biblical. It is like what happened to Jesus. He is being persecuted because he speaks the truth and he talks out about the child abuse, the pedophilia, the Clintons, uh, the Malaysian air. He speaks out about that. And so you got to understand what happened here, folks. You really do. The government showed up at his house with an illegal warrant and took him into jail on a no bond hold. He can't get out. He can't post the money to get out. And why? Not because he's, he's an evil man, but because he holds a pilot's license. That's my opinion. I don't know the, I don't know the real backing of that, but that's my opinion. But Field is a good man. 
a former Marine Corps jet pilot who defended your freedom, defended your freedom, defended everything that you are able to do day in and day out. Now he is in a cell. Why? Because he spoke the truth. Like I speak the truth, like so many others speak the truth, John B. Wells, the Hagnons, all these people, the doctor here, we speak the truth. And we're not afraid. Come and get us. If that's what you want to do, come and get us. But, you know, doctor, can you, I mean, I, I know you had Field on the show today. How's he doing? What can you say about him? There's a lot of listeners that want to know, is he okay? Uh, Field is serving um, humanity. He's serving the children with grace and dignity. And he is every day now. Uh, that I'm aware of since uh, maybe a week now, and I think he's going to continue to do it. It's called The Field Report, and it's about 10 to 12 minutes long. And if you watch the, if you listen, because you can't see him, but he calls in and, and uh, one of his uh, people that love him record his message, and then they post it onto YouTube, and it's called The Field Report. And he spoke yesterday... Um, he, he, he recorded it Sunday night, which was broadcast uh, starting early Monday morning. And I listened to what the man said, and the, the, he, he, he brings in Scripture with what is going on right now. And we are in a spiritual battle. Um, on, I believe it was September 23rd, 2017, uh, there was an alignment of the planets. I forget what they, they call it, but it's something that, that happens about every 7,000 years, I believe. And at that time, I believe it was September 23rd, it's not a coincidence that Q started. And I didn't know Q, I didn't hear about Q till December of 2017. And once I started listening to the Q drops and the people that were decoding it, and some are good, and some are not so good, and the ones that are good are the ones that are saying, this is my opinion, based on what the Q drop was for the day, or the multiple drops, but use your own judgment, and do your own research, and learn. So this is, in my opinion, this is a military operation that was initiated, and it wasn't a coincidence that it started on the 23rd of September 2017. Right now, we're halfway through that 2,000 days of the three and a half years. And I'm not a, <laughs> I'm definitely not a Bible scholar, but we read, uh, my wife and I and son, uh, we listen to scripture every day when we go to, to Mass uh, at least twice a week. And um, so we hear a lot of scripture. And if you're sitting next to uh, Phil McConnell or listening to his show, you understand how much scripture this man knows. And off the top of his head, he'll start quoting something and go, well, let's, you know, let me see if that was right. And he'll pick up his Bible and flip to it. And, and most of the time, he's almost spot on with every word. Um, so he is, a, he is a scriptural man. He is teaching us, even from his jail cell, about the Bible. Read your Bible. Read Book of Revelations. Right now, we're basically chapter 13, 14, and 15, is what I understand it to be. And yesterday on uh, the field report that I was on, I interviewed a woman with multiple degrees, speaks four languages, and I had her, or she suggested that she read chapter 13, 14, and 15 of the Book of Revelations. Because there's a lot of people that don't have a Bible. There's a lot of people that have a Bible sitting on a desk somewhere. They never pick up and open up and read it. And there's a difference between me picking up my Bible and reading it silently. There's a difference if you pick it up and you read it out loud. And there's a difference if you sit and listen to the Word. So we, set, we, we put that Word out yesterday. Took about 14 minutes to read those three chapters, but I know we touched the hearts of many, many people. Well, and doctor, doctor, I can let, me, let me interject. Yep. Let me interject there. I mean, for all those out there that are 
throwing stones at Field because he might have used the F word. The guy is a veteran who fought in combat. I'm sorry. I mean, I'm a good Christian. I work really hard at not dropping the F-bomb ever. But if you attack me or you come at me about something, you're going to get it. Sorry, I'm not perfect. You're going to get it. I'll repent afterwards, but you're going to get it right in your face. But what Field McConnell is, he is a strong Christian man, grounded in the Bible. He has people like, you know, uh, Dr. Goodvibes. He has people like that, and Kirk. He has people with him who feel the same way. Unfortunately, he got incarcerated for it. And we need to step up and we need to help him. I want to tell all of you, if you want to, after listening to this show, if you want to contact Field, send me an email. Go to hearthewatchmanmen.com, click the contact button, that'll come right to me, or I'll go ahead and put my own email address out there. Just go to Mike Kerr, K-E-R-R, 777 at gmail.com. Send me good wishes for Field. If you send me bad wishes, don't worry about it. I'll just delete it. But, you know, the man is in prison because he spoke the truth. Doctor, we have about uh, we have about four minutes left here. Is there is there a closing comment you'd like to make? Yes, I would, and and you you helped uh, bring it bring it up because I was there at four hundred one Main Street when they came and kidnapped him. I was I was there, and I saw what went down, and uh, I felt sad, but you know I didn't feel afraid for Field. I know that there's a lot of people that are, but he has said many times, you know, God asked me to do this job on uh, the 4th of December 2006, I think it was, and um, I'm doing my job, and when my job is done to God's specifications, then he can take me home because I'm ready to go see him. And I could have gotten uh, angry. I knew that we had a show to do on that Monday. <laughs> And at from 2 o'clock to 4 o'clock on Monday morning of that first show without Phil McConnell, I had a re very clear dream, and it was about the parable of the lost sheep. And I have a picture 20 hey, feet from here outside that. my hallway you that's that. got a picture. Yeah, on, on so, what was that, the Field of Honor that you did on the Field Report, you showed that picture, beautiful picture. Yes, I, Your wife yeah. gave you that, right? Correct. Absolutely. Good, good, uh, good recall on that, sir. Uh, but anyway, it was, it was very clear. I was supposed to take that picture, put it in my car, take it down there. And instead of calling people names for calling field names, my mission was to say, you know, all of you that are out there that are saying things that aren't true about field and you feel bad about it, you can repent because Jesus Christ gave his life for us. He died on the cross for us, and he didn't do it for the good, you know, the, the he's, he's after the lost sheep, and we're all been lost sheep, and thank well, God we, we understand it, but this gave us the opportunity for me to speak to whoever's heart was out there and say, you know what, if you think you, you've done such a bad job, you can't out -send Jesus Christ and his victory for yeah, us. I mean, doctor, let's look at, let's look at Jesus for a second. And then we got to go. But, I mean, Jesus picked his disciples. And they were, that was a truly motley crew. I mean, look at Saul <laughs> or Paul, right? Look at Paul. I mean, yep. I mean, uh, but Jesus forgives us all. And you look at Phil McConnell, and I'm not comparing him to Jesus. He's not Jesus. But look at him. He's out there doing the work that Jesus would do if Jesus was here today. And he's out there trying to make sense out of this incredible pedophilia mania that's running in this country and not make sense but to attack it. He's after the Clintons, after Hillary for Benghazi. How? Okay, Jesus can forgive Hillary for Benghazi. I can't. I mean, that's just me. I'm a military kind of person. But, you know, Field is out there telling the truth and speaking the truth. Dr. You know, you guys are doing amazing work. I, God bless you, and thank you so much for taking time out of your day 
to join us here on the Watchman's Report. I, I appreciate you inviting me on. Uh, thank you for the time. And one thing that might save you uh, some extra work, and I had I got this from Fields Lips just an hour and 15 minutes ago. He said, I like getting emails. So you know what? You can All you have to do is, is go to your email bar and type in Field McConnell, and then you can go 2095 um, at pierce.wiscon, W-I dot inmate canteen, C-A-N-T-I-N-E dot com. So Phil McConnell, 2095 at pierce, P-I-E-R-C-E dot W-I dot inmate, I-N-M-A-T-E, canteen, C-A-N-T-I-N-E dot com. And it'll go to Phil McConnell. And are we, are we say, sure about the canteen spelling? It's not canteen. Spelling. I believe it's C A N T I N E. Oh, anyway, do do what do what the doctor says. If you can't get through that way, folks, contact me. I'll get it to Field. I I, I send Field probably every day right now, twenty or thirty emails, and that's wonderful. <laughs> he needs your support. He's alone in that. I mean, think about it. I've been in jail, okay, uh, not for honorable things 25 years ago before I was saved. It's it's a lonely place to be, you know. Yeah. And, and so he just needs to be in touch, and, and we're going to get him out of there, and he'll be back. And he will be at Hear the Watchman in Dallas, Texas, March 5th through the 8th. I encourage you, if you want to meet Field in person, you want to hear what he has to say, his testimony? Go to hearthewatchmanmen.com and join us in Dallas, Texas. We will be at the Hilton DFW Air, uh, Airport Conference Center and Hotel. Go there. It's all on our website. Doctor. Yeah, you've got a stellar, you got a stellar group of speakers. It's unbelievable. Yeah, it'll be a good time for all of us. Yeah. So get there, yeah. be there. And use the promo code FIELD20 and you can get $20 off the price of your general admission ticket. So get there and get busy. Doc, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for all you do, sir. God bless you. God, God bless you. you. All right, folks, that's going to wrap it up for this edition of the Watchman's Report. And as I always say when I close this show, there's absolutely nothing you can't do with Jesus in your heart, except nothing at all. Get out there, get busy, activate your faith, and make a difference. Don't fear persecution. We're Christians. We will be persecuted. God's got us. See you all next week here on The Watchman's Report.